lovers and audiophiles. Welcome back to another video in another month on the VP Concepts YouTube channel. Uh, this month, we're doing something like we always do. Uh, we're kids in, can in the candy store checking out new products together. And um, this project uh, that we're looking at here, I got to be involved with. It's a privilege um, in the development of this. It's the Kimber Cable's new uh, IM cable. It's the Phoenix uh, and it's it, part of a select line and it's their Axios family, okay? That's a lot to remember, but Kimber Cable, all right, Phoenix Axios IM Cable from the select line. So um, what this is, is uh, uh, it, it, came in, it comes in three different flavors and we'll do an unboxing and I'll show you guys. But uh, during the past year, I got to be involved with the project as far as getting prototypes. So I went through three prototypes with them. They listened to the feedback. They really appreciated my input. They did up, uh, make the changes that I suggested. And it's such a, uh, you know, a humbling experience to be involved in a project of this level because this is a God level end game IM cable. I mean, you're not going to need another cable after this. Once you get this, it's done. So no matter if you have a $100 set of IMs or a, uh, you know, $2,000 set of IMs, you, just, you get the MM, MMCX or the two pin, just get the adapter like I have. I can click in between. And then you got your cable forever. And, uh, you know, it's worth that. It's worth that to have something that takes that takes you to a, the highest level you can get in audio quality for your IEMs. I, I treat my IEMs just like I do my, 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 my big rig over here, my big speakers, right? Um, everything gets the same attention. So um, uh, there are people out there, you know, that are going to see this video and say, well, speakers, cables don't make a difference. I know Zio, so I watch Z reviews all the time because he makes me laugh and he's funny, but he thinks cables don't make a difference, and they do. Um, there's guys on the headphone show or whatever that say, oh, headphone cables don't make a difference. I don't understand that. I can hear it clearly. I spent years in different retail showrooms managing them, hearing speakers, a being them against equipment and speakers, and, and heard a difference. Why wouldn't it be the same with an IEM? Um, it, it, I, I probably have five, six cables that I got from Linsoul, right? The Altia, the Zoni, those, those different brands to hear. Well, what about a $30, $40, $70 cable? What, what, what can I hear? And with each one of those, I did hear a difference. So, um, you know, I'm curious what we're gonna get out of the finished product, because I haven't even heard it. I've only heard the prototypes. I haven't got to hear it with the proper uh, interconnects and everything finished and polished. So we're gonna do this together, all right? But I'm very passionate about it, love the hobby, love my big rig, love my two-channel computer over there, love my headphones, my Odyssey LCDXCs and my uh, HD600 Sennheisers. They've got Axios cables on them. Everything has Kimber cable in the house. Um, and now I get to do this with my IEM. So this is a huge, uh, uh, exciting day for me to see the finished product and share it with you. So here we go, guys. Let's get into it. Okay, guys, here we go. We First of all, we have a gorgeous retail packaging. This is a, basically a hammer finish, which I just think is gorgeous. The prettiest packaging I've ever seen Kimber Cable do. And we're going to do things one-handed here together, like always, so bear with me without having to make too many cuts. Um, here is our standard Kimber packaging, which is, again, it's a solid clamshell case. Very nice. If you are wanting to store this away, uh, take it with you on a trip, and you, you know, or a move, you're, you're going to be able to store it and take care of it while it's uh, not on your head. Um, again, a lot of guys may just keep this in the closet until they do move or something like that. But if you're putting it in a suitcase, it really is a nice, uh, nice package. So let's open this up here and uh, check her out. Okay, as always, Kimber Cable never ceases to impress me with their packaging. You have the gorgeous wax seal with the paperwork uh, for the uh, headphones. I, you know, talks about it. Let's see if we can open it here. I'm used to doing this with one hand by now, so I should be able to get this done for us here. I really want to see what is inside here this time. That is a good seal. Okay, so you got a certificate of authenticity. The certificate guarantees Kimber Select uh, cable you have purchased was hand built and tested uh, at our factory in Ogden, Utah. Okay, so this is a Kimber Select cable. This is a higher level um, Axios cable that they're qualifying this as. And I think that the price warrants that, the build quality, the price, uh, the materials. So this is uh, considered a select level. Um, you do get uh, 
their standard Axios paperwork for their larger headphones as well. Remember guys, this cable um, is an Axios, so that's gonna be basically a shrunk down version of their um, uh, on-ear and over-ear headphone cable uh, in, in an IEM size. And then you get the standard information for their larger speaker cables as well, and some information on the carbon, which I actually have on my uh, secondary system. Okay, so that's some nice literature. And then you get this beautiful packaging. And man, this thing is so gorgeous. God, I can't wait to get this out and show you. <laughs> this is next level stuff as far as an IM cable, guys. Um, I don't think anybody's done it to this to this level. So well, let's get it, get it out and check it out together here. So the first thing we're gonna notice is that we have this gorgeous um, uh, wood connector, just like they do with their, man, I wish I could, I could focus that in better for you guys. Doesn't want to autofocus, but uh, there we go. But it has a beautiful wood connector on it, just like their, their larger ones do. And there you go, there's the Kimbra Cable logo uh, stamped into it. Look at that. So you're not getting plastic, heavy metal. You're getting this gorgeous wood uh, and, and, and engraved connector with gold plating too. They didn't use nickel, they used gold on this, which I really like. Then on the other end, they did not skimp there is no plastic here. This is actually also wood, and it's also stamped with the Kimber Cable logo on it, and it's gold plated. Now this one's the MMCX. We do have two pen as well. And then here, you can see, this is the CU version, so it's the old copper, gold and black, but it has the same windings that you get in all of their other larger speaker cables and headphone cables. So, uh, and oh man, look at this, a gorgeous, uh, wooden divider separating the cloth material from the cable itself and then a really nice bead slider on that one is not going to come apart that one's not going to slide down all my other IEM cables slide down that looks really solid there so um, I am so impressed with this so let's open the uh, the next one which which will be the hybrid and take a look at that one okay guys and here we have the uh, HB this is going to be the hybrid and this is going to be the one that I'm honestly most excited about uh, because I have the Axios cable on my, pardon the snap there, uh, I have the uh, hybrid cable on my Odysseys, my LCDXCs. So this is a mini version of that. As you can see, you go from the copper, uh, black and copper color to the silver and black, and this is solid silver. Same connector, same, I got a, I got 4.4 connector here for my Go Blue. And then um, you have the same build quality. Everything's exactly the same. Um, MMCX or two pin you can get for this, no worries. Uh, so this is the HB. And now we're gonna go check out the AG, which is the all silver. Okay, and here is the AG and it is absolutely gorgeous. This is probably, I would think, the best looking one of the bunch as far as aesthetics when it comes to that gorgeous pearl white. Look at that, oh my gosh. So, the, and that's the, the silver. So we have three versions. You have the all copper, the uh, HB, which is the uh, solid copper, solid silver, absolutely no plating here, and then the solid silver. So we are going to give these a burn in uh, and I'll let you know my listening impressions on a $200 set of planar magnetic headphones, uh, IEMs, and my $2,000 uh, AEW Canaries, which are multi-driver with electrostat tweeters and solibaric subs in it. Uh, it'll be a nice comparison to see how it sounds on those two different technologies. Okay, we'll be right back. Okay guys, so um, what I wanted to do here is start with the factory cable and then move into the copper here. Uh, the factory cable in comparison to the other Kimber cables was, um, it was more splashy, more mixed up and jumbled in how, the, how it layered the music. Um, the bass was looser and the tone and timbre were not as accurate or sweet as I was getting on the other cables. Now this did come in a 2.5 balanced and then I got the uh, Moon Audio adapter, uh, which made it 4.4, and it really improved it a lot um, over the, uh, I was actually using an iFi one that was a lot less expensive, and it did the job, but 
This piece was, you know, double the cost and did a lot better, but still, even with that, um, I could not get this cable to sound anything like the Kimber cables. So what do we, what do we hear in the copper? Now I did uh, measure this with the uh, iFi hip deck and the um, iFi Go Blue uh, in uh, wired and in, in uh, Bluetooth on the Go Blue as well. And I also um, uh, listened to it on the Macintosh and the PS Audio. So it had its go around on, on, on all the equipment so that I could really give a, a, an assessment because every piece of equipment did sound different. But the overall um, experience I had with this was, uh, on, 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 let's start with the, with the uh, Basson or BASN MT Pro. Uh, that one was uh, with the copper, it was fuller and more detailed than the uh, Lin Sol Zoe and the Altea um, that I also had tested it against. Uh, it was better in every way, it just added more of what's good. Um, the uh, copper, however, was very dark on the, on the BASN because that's already a, a, it's a planar magnetic and it's definitely a darker closed-in headphone when, when you compare it against the Timeless. Although the, uh, the timbers and uh, detail are much better on the BASN. With the copper, it was almost too much of a good thing. It was very pleasing, but way too dark. So I did not choose this on that, uh, on that headphone. Um, I chose it uh, uh, something else. So actually on the high, uh, um, uh, what else? Let's go over and see how we liked it on the Timeless. Now on the Timeless, which actually is, is hooked up right here, I really, really liked um, the sound on the Timeless. It was actually, um, I'd say, my favorite. It actually sounded better on the hip deck than it did on the Go Blue in this case, which both sounded great, but the hip deck was very nice. So the the, the timeless could be a little bit sharp or, or the, uh, the highs can be a little bit, bit less detailed and airy. And, and this cable kind of brought a golden sound to it, which really made it sound good. So if you have the timeless, I think you would definitely want to pick the copper. And then on the... Uh, let me see what else did I did I say on the AAW Canaries, my two thousand dollar ones. Uh, the copper uh, was much better again than the factory cable. Fuller, the notes outlined and more clear. Such sweet notes, you know that again. That all copper just made everything sound really sweet. The sound stage depth and width, the imaging, the layering, and the base. Uh, the base was warmer as well. So all those things changed for the better compared to the factory cable. And it really sounded amazing out of the box. Um, Lady Blackbird uh, was it was absolutely amazing when I played uh, when I played uh, uh, Fix It. So um, you know, kudos to this cable uh, there. However, um, that was not my favorite either uh, for uh, of the three cables um, on the Canary. But so basically, the copper is safe a safe choice. Um, it uh, doesn't do anything wrong. On very dark, closed-in IEMs, it could be a little bit too lush, but other than that, um, you know, it's a safe bet for, for any headphone, and it's a winner in my book. The, the price on this, uh, I got it in balanced. It's about 1.2 or 1.3 meters. You can get it shorter. You can get it with uh, 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 single-ended or balanced. The balanced is about $150 more. So in this configuration, it's about $783. So again, these are top tier, you know, God level end game IM cables. And boy, it, it just smoked my, where'd I put it? Oh, I don't have it. It, it literally smoked my uh, factory cable. Um, uh, where did I put that darn thing? Uh, anyways, <laughs> the factory cable was about $300 to $350 if, I, if I'm correct. So for double the money, it definitely gave me double the performance and I'm very happy. And again, the slider on this thing is wonderful. And the way that this fits around your ears with the cloth, man, it's like it disappears. You don't even feel it. The uh, microphonics were very good on the copper. Um, when you cinch this up, not, not to your neck, but just below it, um, I didn't even, I couldn't hear anything at all as far as uh, cable brushing against it or anything like that. So the copper is probably the least microphonic of all of them. And that's pleasing too. So uh, double thumbs up to the copper. All right, now we're moving on to the hybrid. The hybrid is the solid silver, solid copper. And this did some really pleasing things in on all the headphones. Um, even though it, it didn't win with the um, Timeless, it won with the uh, 
canaries and with the uh, BASNs. Okay, so this really gave me the best of both worlds. Um, uh, it, it made everything sweet, but opened up the soundstage, clarity, imaging, everything just got sharper, clearer, more open. You did lose a tad bit of the golden, you know, sweetness of the all copper, but the compromise for that was everything else was, was elevated. So um, um, in this case, with the let's start with the um, AEW uh, Canaries here, since that's what I have them hooked up to. Um, the hybrid presentation becomes like a full-size headphone. Um, it really was shocking. Um, when I was listening to Bluetooth on the Go Blue, which usually I don't like to use anymore because it just does not have that oomph and punch. Now that I have the iPhone 15 and I can go... USB-C to USB-C, I always have it hardwired, but adding this cable in, uh, it's, it was like the volume got clicked up too, and everything became clearer and more had better resolution. Uh, with the factory cable, the um, the Bluetooth almost sounded like, uh, you could hear the loss in resolution, right? It was almost tin canny sounding a little bit. There was a slight digital sheen over it, uh, mechanical sheen rather. I didn't like it. Well, this took it away. I was really surprised. So um, I went out with this today, actually, out to the grocery store, walked around and couldn't believe that I wasn't missing the hard wire. The only difference between the hard wire and the Bluetooth on the Go Blue is that you get a little bit more headroom, a little bit more. But I really wasn't missing it because this brought everything back, okay? So um, um, it's, it's, it's ultra detailed, better sound stage and clearer than the copper, a little less warm. The, 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 the timbres were a tad bit less less pronounced or natural, just like, you know, that feeling where you just really go, oh, that honey sound, you know, that was like, like a tube sound. You do lose a little bit of it because of the silver, but again, not enough to even notice it. When you put it on and listen to it straight out and just walk around with it for five, six hours, it's just heaven. You know, you put the copper on these and yes, you notice those timbres and that, that sweetness and warmth, but it's almost over lush on the canaries, the all copper. It's just, was too much, where this balanced everything just right. Um, on the BASN uh, MT Pro, uh, the hybrid, you know, really opens things up and pulls out the sound stage because they're so closed in and dark. Uh, the details were more refined and notes had better decay in the air. It just really brought um, the, the whole performance out of my ears where um, before they were much more closed in. I love my MT Pros. You know, they have great bass, they have great timbre, you know, almost better timbre than my Canaries, I would say. Um, they're not, at, don't have as much resolution, but bringing uh, the hybrid cable on there is absolutely hands down my favorite. So uh, on the Timeless, uh, the hybrid, um, actually it sounded better on the hip deck, um, had a great sound stage um, with this hybrid cable on the hip deck. Um, uh, the Timeless really enjoyed that. It had better bass control than the copper, but the copper still had a beautiful golden sound. I preferred the open soundstage detail and controlled bass of the, of the uh, you know, uh, hybrid, but on the Go Blue, I was torn. The copper was so romantic, deeper bass, a little bit less controlled, but the instrument separation it was a little bit better on, the, on this hybrid. But the timbres, again, were oh so nice on the Go Blue. Um, I'd be totally happy with either on, on the on the timeless, but you know, the copper would be my choice at the end of the day if you said, you know, you gotta jump off a cliff or pick one. You know, due to the musical presentation of the of, of the copper, I chose that just barely over this. So um, now this cable, guys, um, is $1,462 in this length and with the balanced, again, 150 less with the single ended. You can get it shorter as well, but uh, $1,462 for the hybrid and it was the winner for the BASN um, MT Pro and the Canary. And again, the copper was the winner for the seven Hertz. And last but not least is the prettiest and most expensive cable in the collection, uh, the all silver or the AG. Um, this was a surprise to me because I really expected it to be incredibly analytical and it was not. Um, this, uh, the good points to this cable, even though you notice that it didn't win outright, uh, over the three cables, um, this did have some 
better attributes than the other two cables, the copper and the hybrid. Um, that was the sweetness and er, how can I put it? The, the, the extension and the highs. They were effort, effortless. They went on forever. Uh, this was the smoothest sounding uh, of the three. The copper being the least, the HB coming in second, and the uh, silver coming in top for smoothness. And as far as soundstage, openness, instrument separation, uh, uh, clarity, this had all of them beat as well. Um, so why didn't I choose this one? Well, with the, um, let's start with, with the uh, AW Canaries. The silver, again, even more soundstage, air, and decay than the hybrid. It really brightens them up without losing the warmth. Uh, these were not analytical at all uh, or sterile. and uh, They were the, probably the most neutral, but not in an unforgiving way. Um, it, it, it really blew me away. Um, the, the issue was that with the canaries, I think it's because of the uh, electrostatic tweeters. Um, I got... Uh, uh, when I was listening to, uh, what was that song? I, I'm going to put all of the songs that I actually demoed these on uh, in the item description. It was, uh, I was made for loving you, baby. Um, uh, I'll have the singer up in the, uh, at the end of the video. But there's a part when it kind of breaks down into almost like a country twang uh, uh, in the middle of the song. And it was just a little bit too, sh too, too revealing, too resolving. Um, too neutral for me. I need a little bit of warmth and in, and in, 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 you know in that presentation and everything else actually sounded great. But on that song, I really noticed it stand out. So that's why I picked the HB with the copper. The the Canaries AEW Canaries Ele Electrostack tweeters really liked the the copper in there. Now um, as far as the uh, BA, the BASN MT Pro here, this was close. I it almost won because it took these closed in headphones more open and more airy even than the HB did. And I was like, oh my God, these are just like off my head now. I'm just listening to them in the room. They're beautiful. And they, again, just the highs were effortless. The bass was controlled. But again, that touch of, of copper in the HB that just gives that timbre, you know, on, on piano notes when it hits or the pluck on an on a, on a upright bass, there's a pluntness or a juiciness that I just wasn't quite hearing with these um, over the HB. Now, I don't quite have 230 hours on this and because, you know, I just run out of time. I, I had these burning in for oh, eight days straight, or uh, seven or eight days, but I, I don't think I quite hit that 230 hour mark. And in my big system, my silver coax cable um, really took 230 hours to burn in. And so did my uh, HD, uh, HD60 Illuminations coax before that. So I do know that silver can take a long time before it really gets that golden warm sound. So I bet you by the time I get to review the hip deck next month, this is probably going to be a little bit warmer. But you're going from, you know, $1,462 for the HB to $1,875 for the AG. And for me at this time, that wasn't enough to warrant the difference between the two. But uh, if you have a headphone that's closed in, way too warm, needs some bass control, this is going to be a winner on that IEM for you guys. So, um, you know, kudos to this. It almost took first place with the basin, but uh, uh, just barely missed it. Okay. Um, and then with the, uh, what did I hear? We already covered the Canary. We co covered the BASN. What about the Timeless 7 Hertz? Okay. Um, the silver on, on, uh, both devices that I listened to the, uh, hip deck and the go blue, it was just way too, um, unnatural or mechanical sounding with the Timeless. The Timeless is already a bit of an edgy headphone and it just didn't like it. And that's why I chose the copper complete opposite spectrum. So as you can see, when I listen to the hip deck or I listen to the Go Blue, sometimes I prefer the Go Blue presentation over the hip deck and, and vice versa. Um, and uh, it really was, a, you know, an eye opener that, you know, depending on the technology and ability of your headphone and the equipment that you're listening to, to it on, it will really make you decide what you want more. Um, so if budget allows, you know, you could you could have all three in your collection and switch between different IEMs based on their colored presentation, right? Um, or you could just stick with something like the HB, the hybrid, spend the 1462, 
and uh, have your Endgame headphone forever. So um, uh, that is the, you know, that's it, guys. That is uh, my overall listening impressions of the three cables. And again, I will put the songs that I demoed this on. There were some vocals. There was some jazz. Um, uh, what is the Gary Burton Quartet? I listened to some, uh, you know, deep house with some heavy bass and, you know, uh, a, a very textured, busy performance to really tell how the, the, they imaged and separated the instruments in space. And I'll, I'll put those on there so you can, hopefully, if you have title, go listen to them. All right, guys, so that's it. Um, I'll flip you around here. Th thank you so much for watching, and uh, we'll catch you next month when I review the Hip Deck 3. All right? Talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.